All right, guys, today we're going to talk about converting 223 brass into 300 blackout brass. Uh, this is actually a live round that I loaded up. We'll get to it in a minute. So we all know the process. You take a 223 case. This is a Remington Peter. And you basically you run it through whatever your um, process and you cut the neck off and you basically make a straight wall pistol case. This generally works good for most brass. There is some brass that you just need to stay away from. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. And the reason why I want to say that is because it'll throw you off a lot of people especially me I went through it we'll go through and we'll convert all this brass um, load them up we thought we've done all of our checking like this is a 300 blackout conversion and this is the uh, Lee Wilson 300 blackout um, case gauge and you can see everything fits, it fits flush everything works great but this round will not chamber in the rifle because of the neck thickness certain brass and there's a list um, with YouTube's new changes I can't really uh, put links and stuff on here because it would be against their criteria but you can find it it's called sticky brass um, there's a whole list of good brass and bad brass you can check that out so basically what you do here's the reason why and I've seen people take um, and buy all kind of different things to try and alleviate this to be able to use whatever brass they uh, happen to have which is fine if you want to go into neck turning I, I got some examples here of ones that would not chamber and the only way you'll get these to chamber is to get into a neck turning setup where you have to turn this brass down and make it thinner because it's just too thick and the reason why that is is because this portion here of the brass is too thick it's on the thicker side of the spec well when you when you buy the brass or the loaded rounds the necks and everything are already sized to go for two two three but when we cut this off right here this is the proper neck size and the thickness whether they turned it or however they did in their manufacturing process we chop this neck off and then we take and we reform this straight wall pistol case see that we reform this part of the brass into the neck which this part of the brass is just too thick to chamber in the rifle and even though you have a chamber gauge where this should say hey if it fits in here it'll chamber in any rifle that's just not the case so some of this brass and you can like I said you can go to sticky guns they have a really good list um it tells you the do and don't and there's only like like a thousandths off on the thickness of the um neck that i actually off the case of the body when it becomes the neck there's just a little bit of like a thousandth on each side too much so when it goes to go into the chamber You get this situation right here where it'll go almost all the way in and the problem being the neck is right there even if I don't care how far you seat this bullet in and how much you crimp it it's just not gonna go into the rifle you, you just can't make it go I've tried and tried and tried everything I've tried with a small base um, die and resize more of the brass 
I've pushed the um, bullet in deeper, tried a different OAL, it just will not work. So there is some brass you just need to stay away from. Here's a prime example of some of them that would not chamber in my particular build. build. Uh, this is a Remington Peter that would not. This is a FC. An FC, if I'm not mistaken, on the list. Some of them will, some of them won't. It has to do with the uh, name stamp. This is a, a PMP. I know PMP. I've had a lot of problems. All of these were ones that I tore back apart because they just would not chamber in the rifle. No matter what I did, you can see they had test load data right on the side of them. And this is a, a RMP. Um, FS. PMP. PMP. And FC. So like I said, some of them just they won't chamber um, and I've checked and checked and checked all different ways but when I went in and sorted my brass typically what I do now is I use all Lake City Lake City seems to be really good but if you'll stick to that list you won't have any problems checking um, having problems with your rounds chambering there's nothing more stressful than going doing all your checks, all your homework, loading up rounds, and then you can't figure out why some everything will be going along fine, some will shoot just fine, and some won't. Even when you check them in your chamber. Because basically what that does is it holds it off just enough with that neck inside the chamber that it won't let the bolt fully close and the lugs lock in. And now, on a single action, um, in a single shot or a bolt action, you probably won't have to worry about this. It would probably be more incipient to your specific rifle. But specifically the 300 blackout platform, like I said, the problem is, is the thick brass that's in this part and then once you cut the neck off and you push this part up in to free size the brass it just it won't work the case on each side is too thick and like I said unless you want to get into paying another hundred bucks to buy uh, equipment to be able to actually turn these necks down you can't use it it's just a big hassle some 223 brass is just best to save for 223 all of this stuff right here, like this PPU, it's not even worth pulling with. Leave them as 223, don't convert them, and you'll be fine. Um, hope that helps you out. Um, like I said, there's a website, I think it's Sticky Guns. If you, if you, if you just Google Sticky Guns bad brass list, and it has all the good ones and bad ones, and you stick to that list, which is what I've been doing here recently, and I've not had a single problem with 300 blackout brass running it runs 100 percent perfect but i hope that helps you out from my experience to you maybe it'll save you a little headache i'm going